What's up everyone? So I wanted to do a little bit of a different vlog. I asked, I'm actually currently sitting on my scooter. I fell again today, by the way. I wasn't on my scooter, I was hopping to get it out of my trunk and I ate it in the parking garage, so that was fun. But anyway, I wanted to do something a little bit different. I wanted to um, do some question, or answer some questions that you guys had for me. Um, <clears throat> so let's not waste any time, let's get started. Piper C. Smith um, asked, are you going to compete a fifth year? Um, great question. I don't know. Seeing that um, recovery goes well, um, it, it all honestly, it all kind of depends on um, where I'm at and how I'm feeling, um, where I am at in recovery in life. Um, if um, next year goes as planned and it, and I you know finish on a strong note, then um, you know I might not take that fifth year. It is definitely comforting to know that um, that is an option for me. But um, as of now, it's just up in the air. Hannah E. Gardner asked, "Do you wish you had?" A brother or do you love having all sisters what is the best part about having sisters oh my gosh um I feel like I don't know if this is just me but I think at least for me as a girl I'd always wanted like an older brother like because you know he can invite all his friends over whatever and um but having sisters it's the best thing ever when I was growing up it was um a lot of fighting but um they're my best friends now and I wouldn't trade them for the world. Um, yeah, we still bicker and we still fight, but um, they're my best friends and um, I can trust them with anything because they're family, so it's not like they can um, really betray me and it's not like I can actually get rid of them, so I don't have a choice. Um, at the best part, I would say, um, well, one, the fact that we can always share clothes, that's incredible, but um, I would say just knowing you always have a friend. Aaron Ward, 19. Um, did you ever do any other sports than gymnastics? Um, you know, growing up, I would play like church league soccer and um, basketball. I would literally run down the ball or run down the court with the ball in my hand. Like I never dribbled. So I don't really consider any other sports that I've actually done besides gymnastics. Yes and no. Nothing seriously, at least. Bear with me here. I might butcher these last names. Audrey Nadrasic, how do you keep your faith in God when times get tough? That's a great question. I think what um, helps me keep my faith in him is just, uh, well, one, surrounding yourself with the right people. And I think um, when you create a routine that um, incorporates God in all aspects of your life, um, and when he's your center of focus, life gets a lot easier. It's not that life gets easier, but um, your perspective and you're able to manage it better. And I feel that um, if God is my center of focus, um, you know, these, these distractions that life likes to try to put in your way and um, create obstacles it's they're easier to overcome but um I guess I find comfort in knowing that this is all part of his plan um and why would I not want to be a part of that plan why would I not want to live out his plan underscore Kenzie Klee underscore what do you think life would be like without gymnastics okay when I saw this question I thought to myself that is one of the best questions I've ever I've been asked I have never thought about that it's crazy because I would not be right here would not be recording this vlog um in Baton Rouge, I'd never even been to Louisiana until I came for a visit down here. So um, to think where I would be at in life as a person, um, who my friends would be, I I, I cannot even imagine. In um, gymnastics, what I've learned is um, it, it's been a gift to me. Um, I, I think I can say that gym, um, gymnastics is a talent of mine and um, but what I've learned is that it's not my purpose. My purpose was on this earth was not to be a gymnast. My purpose was to use my gift of gymnastics to create a foundation um, as a Christian to spread God's word. And um, it's it's cool that the platform I've created with gymnastics has helped me to branch out and vlog like this. And um, I've been able to share God's word through that. And so that's been really cool. But um, I can't imagine where I'd be right now um, without it. So great question. Esther underscore Sloop asks, what's your favorite Bible verse? Last summer I got uh, my tonsils out and I don't know if any of you have ever gotten your tonsils out, but I do not recommend it. It was probably the worst thing I've ever done in my life. It was awful. But mine actually re, like when they were healing, um, they, the, like the scabs like ripped off and I was like coughing up blood. Sorry, this is really gross. So I had to go back to the ER and get them recauterized. Um, and while I was sitting like in the waiting room waiting for like the doctor to come back in, um, I, I was obviously in a panic and I hate needles and um, so hospitals are just not good for me. I look up at the whiteboard and it's Psalm 46 1, the Lord is my strength and refuge and ever present help in trouble. And ever since it's been my favorite verse, just, just to see that 
no matter where you are, God's going to meet you there, and um, he's there with you. It, it was so comforting and so um, refreshing to see that in the midst of all that panic for me that he was still there. So Psalm 46.1 is just um, a really go-to for me. Gabby Levy, how many years apart are you um, with your sisters, and who are you closest with? So my older sister's 22, I'm 20, Skyla is 17, and Emma is 15. Um, you know, people people ask me this, like, who are you closest with? Like, who's your, who's your favorite sister? And, like, I can't say I have a favorite sister. Like, I can't do that. Shayla and I were so close in age, and our birthdays are two days apart. So growing up, we always had, like, ma um, we'd wear matching outfits, and we'd have, like, combined birthday parties, and we've always... Um, kind of had the same friend group, so I would say I'm closest with her in that realm. But um, as as my younger two sisters have grown up, um, and they're teenagers now, and we have more in common because you know they don't play with dolls anymore and you know, teenager things, girl things. My relationship with them has grown a lot too, and um, it's it's really beautiful how it's all coming together. When you're younger, you fight about toys and whatever. I consider myself really lucky that I'm able to consider them my best friends. I I guess I would say I'm closest with Shayla just because. I feel like we've had a lot of our lives done together. I don't know, all our relationships are different, so I can't really answer that, and I don't want them to be mad at me. Julia Steer asks, one skill you wish you could do? Um, just about anything on bars, because I cannot do bars at all. Y'all, I can't even get into a front grip, so gymnasts, if you know what I'm talking about, like, I can't even do that. Literally, the only skills I can do are what I compete. I can't do anything else. I think a Jaeger would be really fun to do, mostly because front grip and I've never really done that before. So I'd say a Jaeger on bars, anything on bars. I'd love to do a shaposh. I just could never do it. Alexis Allen, any tips for overcoming a fear on a skill? This is a great question. Um, I was lucky enough that, um, I think it's just my personality. I wasn't, I was never scared of a skill growing up. Actually, I take that back. I was scared, sorry, some of my nose. I was scared of a standing back tuck off the beam. Like that's a that's a stick drill. That's not a skill. And that's what I was scared of. It bizarre, but I grew out of it. It was fine. I would say that you are in control. Just remember that you're the one in charge of your body. You're the one actually doing the skill. Um, I feel like Julia. You know, if I'm wrong, comment. But um, that it this is a beam skill. I don't know. I feel like that's the most common because like who isn't scared of beam? Low key. You know what I mean? But you, the beam's not going to move or whatever event it is. That the equipment that you're on is not going to move, and you need to trust in that, and you need to. Trust that um, your coaches aren't gonna let you do a skill that you're not ready for. Um, if it's a skill you've done before and you crashed on it, I would break it down, go back to basics, um, split it up. If it's a flight series, if it's a walkover handspring, do a walkover separately, do a standing back handspring. You know, break it down and um, just remind yourself that your body is ready to do it and um, you have to be fully confident in it. If you hold back, that's probably when you're gonna get hurt. You've gotta go um, full-fledged for it. So that, that would be my advice to you. Rachel Martin. What things make you motivated keep your dreams alive? That's a good question. What keeps me motivated? Coming to college, my team, for sure. Um, it's such a different dynamic from club gymnastics to college. And I think that um, when, you, when you put into perspective that you've got 16 other individuals that are counting on you, you've got a staff, you have a university counting on you, um, and that chose, to that chose you to represent them, um, you know, there's there's a greater purpose behind all of it. It's not about you at that point. I think what really keeps me motivated is knowing that you can always be better, and that that pushes me. I'm I'm a bit of a perfectionist because I just get so frustrated with myself if I don't get something right. I like expect myself to um, get a skill the first time if I don't see it in the world. Not really. I've gotten better. I think knowing that there's always an area where you can um, improve in really keeps me going. Um, and not being not becoming complacent um, that's something our team really tries to focus on is um, you know don't don't just put things in cruise control you can always be better Allison Faith favorite thing about being a collegiate gymnast and favorite Post Malone song favorite Post Malone song Candy Paint hands down actually the whole Stoney album really but whatever anyway favorite thing about being a collegiate gymnast I so before meets we stand in the circle and we all have you know our fair share of words to say and I never fail to mention, I just I just think it's so insane that out of the entire United States and even Canada and England, Ruby, this school, LSU, picked me um, to represent them. And that is so humbling and that is so honoring. Such a unique experience that um, I can't help but to just to go out there and want to do my best for the school because that, 
for them to take a chance on someone and, and invest in them as almost like a business, um, that's incredible. And I think that's my favorite part is representing such a fine university. Um, I'm a singlet. How does it feel to not be competing this season? As you can imagine, it sucks. I have this overwhelming peace about it. Words of encouragement have really helped me just to keep this perspective. Um, it's just, it, it makes it so much easier giving it to God and knowing that this is part of the plan. I'm just excited to um, be there emotionally for my team. Um, as you guys know, I love to cheer them on. And um, so the fact that I can like really, really do that and not have to worry about like saving a little bit of energy for a floor team is exciting for me, but um, I'm definitely gonna be losing my voice, so. Okay, I, I no idea how to pronounce your last name, but your name is McKinsey. How did you grow your relationship with God? Were you raised religious or was it something that you started doing later in life? No, I, I grew up religious. Um, I grew up in a Christian household. We went to church almost every Sunday. Um, you know, um, I went to a private school, so I always had Bible class. Um, I was always somehow involved with the church. And I always had, um, you know, God in my life. I've said this, I said this in a previous vlog. Um, I don't think my relationship personally started with Christ until I got to college when I, um, you know, there was no more Bible class for me in school. There was no more, oh, we have to go to church because the whole family's going. I had to find the time. I had to incorporate that into my schedule. Um, I had to find the right people to um, become friends with. You know, I had to make the right friend group. Um, ultimately, those were decisions I had to make. And um, when, when I started doing that, when I started truly investing my time um, and not like memorizing a Bible verse for a test, um, but for genuine comfort and help, um, that's when it really started clicking. And um, I, I realized that God rewards obedience. He rewards loyalty. And um, honestly, I had the absolute pleasure to room with Sydney Ewing, um, a former LSU gymnast on the team, um, on the road for competitions um, for the my first two years. And um, I mean, she'd bring her Bible every time and she'd read it every single night um, and every morning. Um, she'd actually, I'm not kidding guys, she would find a church to go to when we were on the road. Um, I'll never forget Nebraska, she found this beautiful cathedral and she was like, oh, I think I have enough time, I'm gonna go walk down there and try to catch mass and she would send me pictures of it and it was, it was beautiful. The thing with her though is she never, she never shoved it down my throat. She never was like, oh, like you should read your Bible, you know, it was, she was just genuine. She was just reading her Bible and um, she just really exemplified what um, a Christ-like example is and um, I really looked up to that. I really saw there's something different in her and I was like, I want that. Um, the way she spoke, the way she carried herself. Um, Sydney is a phenomenal human being and um, I, I was so lucky. I, that was totally God to room us together. But um, yeah, Sydney, Sydney was a huge help in that. Um, and with that, I just um, started becoming more involved with FCA and um, um, I have a discipleship with um, one of the FCA leaders. Um, and I just, I just make it a priority. So that's, that's really how it grew for me. Haley Zampella, what gets you through a gymnastics practice when you're having a bad day? I don't think anything can. I think, I think it's, I think sometimes it's just inevitable. You know, you're going to have those days where you're tired and you're sore or something's hurting or you can't get a skill or you can't make a correction, or maybe it's not even you. Maybe the coaches are in a bad mood and they just decide to yell at you. Um, some things are out of your control, but some things you can't control. Um, I think if I've learned anything is, um, I like to look at it this way. If I'm in one of those moods where I'm like, oh, I just, you know what, I don't feel like being here. I just don't. Um, think of it this way. You don't have a choice. You're there. Your coach gave you your assignment. It's not like you can't get it done. Um, you have to get it done. So I try to look at it as if, um, you know, this is what I'm dealing with. This is how I'm feeling. There's, there's no way around that. Um, but I've got to get it done. So I try to keep that perspective that it's going to be over eventually. Um, sometimes there's those days where you just have to bite your tongue. You just got to get through the day and that's okay. And that, that is winning. That is getting through practice. Um, sometimes that's, that's the small victory of the day. Um, but um, honestly, the bad days are the most important because if you can get through that day and you can learn um, of how to cope with whatever you're dealing with, um, ultimately you're going to be a better person and better athlete at the end of that practice. Last one. Bear with me. L Pomp Pompadour? What do you and your roommates do together on a daily basis? Do you guys spend a lot of time with each other other than in the gym? So I'm room with um, Lexi Priestman and Sarah Finnegan. Um, and those are just my girls, those are my girls. I think to spend time um, 
you know, we, we just try to sit down and just have talks. Like we, we literally just did that today. It's been a while too. Um, things have been busy with preseason and school and the holidays. And um, I think it's just been go, go, go for us. Sometimes it is harder to, um, you know, get that one-on-one -on -one time with them other than in the gym. But you know, it's important to find that balance because yeah, you're living with them and you see them in the gym. Um, but you know, those are your girls, those are your people. And you gotta, you gotta make sure that, um, you know, their heart's in the right place. You gotta check up on them. I think we try to um, do things outside the gym. We'll go to dinner together every once in a while. We'll get dressed up just because we, we don't wanna wear athletic gear all the time. And, um, but yeah, we, we try to make that a really important thing. But honestly, we mostly see each other in the gym, um, which is fun, but we don't even spend time with each other while we're there, you know, we're working. Thank you guys so much for the questions. Those were really good questions. Honestly, I was kind of expecting questions, something about like my mom or something about my injury. And um, so thank you guys for branching out and really thinking. That, that really meant a lot to me. Um, you guys care and you guys really wanna know. I plan to do more videos like this. I think these are fun and a little different. So thanks guys.